What's good everyone, Gberg Stacks here and today I want to make a video on Zeke's conversions because I did end up making a video on this before it was changed but since it was changed it became a whole different item and this item actually got relatively popular in pretty much high elo and uh, professional play at, like kind of exclusively if you go to like probably masters diamond and below uh, at least in, in NA uh, which is where I play this item never gets seen i don't ever see it i maybe see a one in every a thousand game but and, you know that's probably because people pick champs that pro players are, are playing and then they end up you know maybe it gets recommended to them and they end up building it and stuff right so uh as i've been doing with my videos uh, we're gonna go over the recipe we're gonna go over the stats uh before that we're gonna go over the patch history uh see the changes and i'm gonna talk a little bit about that and then, you know, we're going to go over the passive. We're going to go over some champions that end up uh, using this item. But obviously, uh, we're going to just look at pretty much melee tank champions. So I'm not necessarily going to go over that. But then we're going to go into the practice tool and, like, really test out this item and, and do things around that, right? So without further ado, let's go into the patches three, right? So if we go uh, to when it was changed. So 14.1 is when this item was changed to what it is now. Right, and then it ended up being, uh, or actually it ended up being changed to what it is now, uh, at fourteen point ten, where it got the different stat line. But fourteen point one is where the passive got changed to something different, All right? And I want to talk about this because even the old, I believe that the old, what is it, Zeke's was a lot better than the new Zeke's in terms of the passive. Obviously, the new Zeke's, the stats that it has, where it gives you armor mr haste and hp that's amazing that's everything that you want in an item uh you know as a support or as a champion that's building these pretty much aura items that give you the the value that you want from the passives and and the value that you want from the the gold that you end up spending on it right so uh something that i talked about in my old video was how good the old passive ended up scaling so let's read it real quick we, we're not going to discuss the stats because i thought the stats on this item weren't good at all but we're gonna go over the passives right so it had the, the conduit uh passive it was an active passive where you designate a target allied champion as the accomplice forming a tether between you and them and the champions can only be designated as accomplice by one zeke's convergence at a time so this was kind of it had the thing where of like um what's this item called it's up here uh knight's vow where you just choose a champion and then they become uh, you know, a designated uh, thing for the other passive of this item. And the other passive of this item was whenever you immobilize an enemy champion, it marked them for eight seconds and your accomplice's basic attacks on hit and abilities hit against marked enemies. Fire a missile at them that deals a flat amount of damage based on your level, uh, plus 7.5% of your AP, plus 1.5% of your maximum health as bonus magic damage on arrival this item was actually turbo broken and nobody builded it nobody built it nobody built it like not only was the base damage a lot more than you know Arden sensor more than a couple items uh this was before i think it was like this uh since 10.25 uh which was before the 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 update where they ended up giving everybody more base stats more base hp more more armor more and more and stuff like that so the passive was the same and dealt the same amount of damage uh in a time where damage was uh well meant a little bit more as where after that the durability patch is what i was uh, alluding to uh ended up you know pretty much nerfing a lot of uh damage in the game uh but this this was kind of not touched right and you know, plus 0.75% of your AP, most of the, the like, the tank champions that end up buying this are, like, necessarily, they're, like, AP scalers. And this wasn't that big of a deal, except for some champions that I believe were actually, like, just super good with this. You know, somebody like Galio, somebody like Swain, who you're going to buy AP, but then you can end up taking this item and, you know, just helping your team deal more magic damage. Or, you know, if you have a carry, uh, you can end up buying this and it, it's going to be really good. But this isn't even the biggest part. The biggest part is that, you know, 1.5% of your maximum health uh, ends up having that scaling on this item, which is, you know, 
pretty good, right? Especially after the durability patch. A champion with 2k HP would end up giving pretty much 30 of uh, flat damage because of this, right? And then let's say you're le you get that third you get 2k HP at level 11. It's already dealing 53.53, uh, you know, plus that 30 of uh, flat magic damage. You're, you're giving them 80 magic damage on hit, uh, plus whatever your AP is. More than likely, let's just say it's zero. That's a good amount of magic damage, right? And that's for eight seconds as long as you immobilize them. So slows don't matter. It's all about CC, knockups, stuns, roots. There's probably some other ones. Uh, I don't think grounded works. Uh, maybe it says it right there. Uh, suppressions. Stasis. So I'm guessing this could work on Bard. Or it could have worked on Bard. Sleeps. And then uh, Berserk, Charm, Fleet, Taunt, and stuff like that. And Airborne or, and Roots. And I already said that. Suppressions. And, and yeah. Uh, so this item was really good. And I do think that this item is or this you, passive is superior to what it is now. And it makes a lot more sense. Right? But with what they end up doing with the passive... The new passive, if you don't know already. So upon casting your ultimate ability, you summon a storm of flame and ice around you for 5 seconds, dealing 50 magic damage every second, and slowing enemies within the area by 30% at a 45 second cooldown. So they pretty much capped the damage and made it more so that the user of this item gets the, the power from it or the damage from it, which is... You know a little better for you know it makes you feel a little better as the tank player where it gives you a little bit more uh carry potential where if you you know you're able to get on top of the enemies and you get on top of five of them uh this ends up dealing you know a pretty handsome amount of damage right 50 damage every second for five seconds you if you know an enemy champion is on it for the entire duration it's a full 250 magic damage uh that doesn't scale and that obviously that's before resistances or calculator or that's pre-mitigation damage. Uh, and if you're on top of all five of them, you can end up dealing 1,250 damage pre-mitigation uh, in, in the fight, right? But that compared to the eight seconds and with a champion that can end up having 2.0 attack speed, uh, 2.5 attack speed, uh, you giving them 80 bonus damage for eight seconds is kind of wild no uh you know they have, if they have two two attack speed and they get to auto attack for eight seconds which is you know not really going to happen they get but obviously you getting this is like the best case scenarios and also this can this works on runans things like that we'll just say single target for right now uh and let's say it deals 80 damage 16 times 80 16 times 8 you deal 800 you deal 1200 so it's the same amount of damage but this can obviously scale way better because it has scaling and then it has another outside scaling which is the attack speed of of the champion that you designate as the conduit or the accomplice and you know there's items like i said runans that can end up making the on hit damage spread out a little bit more and then it also works on spells so not just auto attacks and things like that right there's, there's champions like varus uh zaya uh Siver and stuff like that that are like spell slingers and that also have well obviously you have to be immobilizing the champion and stuff like that and, and in order for them to even be marked in the first place as where uh the new one all you have to do is throw out the ultimate and, and then you also get a nice little slow and stuff like that right so in my opinion right some good changes that they ended up doing to the item was changing the stats the, that was amazing right it used to be simply an, an armor item but they lowered the armor added magic resist and made it very very good uh and then you know they increased the health uh, uh lowered a little bit of the ability haste, but that doesn't necessarily matter and you know got rid of the mana the mana uh, especially if we look at the game now the only champions that really need bonus mana are like a niche amount of adcs and then um, like mage mid laners and that's pretty much it right junglers if they have the man if they have the jungle item they don't need mana items uh supports don't need mana items uh unless you're a mage support but then you know that you just fall into the mage class right uh, and then they have their own items for this now, even like tanks don't need it so mana outside of a specific class is not even that good of a stat 
because you don't get as much value from it as somebody like a mage would. So this was a great change, but I think that the new passive is not as good. It does make you feel like you have more agency because obviously, you know, for lower level uh, players, you know, not only making, not only did they say the active items have like a harder time being used for lower level players uh, because, you know, you have to remember to use the active you have to put the active on the correct person in order to get the most value from it and stuff like that. And then, you know, you need the, the person who you have the active on to actually hit the, the champions that you immobilize. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of problems with that, making this passive more, like, high-level skewed. But you, you still didn't even see high-level players do that. As opposed to the new item where... As long as you throw your ultimate, even if you miss it, even if you hit it, even if you hit the best ultimate in your life or you hit the worst ultimate of your life, right? You're going to have this item do something, which is kind of where they went for it. Uh, that's, you know, kind of not the best thing, especially since we, we kind of still have items in the game that are, you know, not necessarily so uh, low level friendly. Stuff like Knight's Vow. Uh, which is still kind of a little easy, right? You put it on someone, you're still going to get the value. But lock it, it's an active item uh, that also has range and stuff like that. And there's like uh, some, some things like that, right? But that's just my rant on the new one versus the old one and things like that, right? If the old Zeke's that had this passive got the stat change, I think it would have been an amazing item that probably would have gotten nerfed. And probably would have seen some type of metas formed around it. In my opinion. I would be abusing it. <laughs> but yeah. Let's go to the recipe. Let's go to the stats. And then let's see how it works in the game. Right. So if we go through the recipe. Zeke Convergence costs 2,200 gold. Standard for the support items. I think it's a very good uh, like gold cost. In terms of you know what the support champions want. And then it's also good in the fact that. You know, a tank jungler can end up saying, I want to go low, low gold cost items that give me good effectiveness and, you know, sacrifice me being able to carry games uh, by not getting stuff like Sunfire or, or you know, these, these higher gold items, which are actually just not better than a lot of the cheaper items in the game, which is, a, it's pretty weird, right? Something like Thornmail should give you more value than something like Locket, but uh, only in, in specific cases will it, uh, and and things like that, right? Uh, not even specific, but in in certain cases it will, and, and stuff like that. And then you need you know items to make that one stronger, as where something like Locket is just already amazing by itself. Something like Zeke's is going to be good by itself as a first item purchase and things like that. Yada yada yada, right? Uh, and a, a good amount of the portion that the gold cost is in Thornmail is in something that has a condition in it which is a healing reduction right so if we go back to the recipe right in order to build zeke's conversions you need the components of kindle gem claw farmer and no magic mantle so you you end up having when you have these three items in your inventory you have 200 hp 10 ability haste 15 armor and 20 uh, magic resistance which no magic mantle recently got nerfed uh and when you have these items in your inventory, you need 700 gold to complete Zeke's Convergence. I think that's completely fine. I do think that uh, for these support items, it's you know not as good to have such a high combined uh, cost being like negated or, or like having to wait such high gold in order to uh, you know complete the item. But I think it's it's okay. It's fine. Something like 600, something like 500 would be better uh, because, you know, you don't have gold income. But, you know, there's not too many ways to really do that outside of maybe changing the items or, or, or things like that. Right. It used to be 650. But since they ended up changing no magic, uh, it's it's now 700. Uh, 650 sounds a little better, but whatever. Right. And then when you upgrade it or when you finally finish Zeke's, your ability haste stays the same. You end up getting 10 armor. That's pretty good. You end up getting 5 magic resistance. That's pretty good. And you end up getting 100 HP. So you actually get an increase in stats. That's amazing, right? You want to see that. If we look at the gold cost, 
uh, in terms of values without the passive it has pretty even gold value that's what you want to see that's completely fine obviously these numbers are kind of fake uh, because the gold value is you know not taking into account uh, like how your team wants to play how you play around the stat that you're given does your champion get bonus uh you know bonuses from having these stats uh you know does this do these stats help your champion even like function uh how do these stats uh play versus the champions you're going against right obviously uh, the gold cost you know it's a, it's very difficult to the to get value or to understand the value in a you know outside of this item just existing right and if you're just looking at the item without looking at the context in which the item is purchased this is what it looks like and it's you know it's okay right so we go to the passive of this item right this is what you're so you're supposed to get like a very good usefulness out of it we already talked about it right but let's let's read it one more time so the passive excuse me i'm very tired it's pretty late it's called frost fire tempest and upon casting your ultimate ability you summon a storm of flame and ice around you for five seconds one thing that this uh this a website doesn't tell us is the range of this item which is what we will be going into the practice tool for right and so it's not the the damage the tick rate of the damage is 12.5 magic damage every uh quarter of a second 0.25 uh seconds right which equals out to 50 damage every second to nearby enemies and slowing them by 30 percent which that slow is really good right 30 percent slow if somebody has 400 uh, movement speed you're taking away 100 movements 120 movement speed from them which is very annoying right especially as a, you know if you're a melee champion and if the enemy team just has more damage uh, you, you know and whoever has the zeeks is able to stay on top of you hard right very hard to play against right has a 45 second cooldown and it starts on ultimate cast so i don't necessarily know i'm gonna I'm a play galio and i'm gonna see how this works Right? Does it start at the beginning of your cast, or is it when you land, and yada, 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 right? Uh, because there's a couple champions that have things like that, which, you know, you might end up buying them on, right? So, let's go to the game. Uh, let's go to the practice tool and stuff like that. Uh, what we can talk about is, like, are there any runes that end up uh make being very good with this item they ended up getting rid of a rune uh that was in this tree that was really good with item cooldowns i for, i think it was called ingenious hunter uh you know there's probably some items in the game in which you know obviously there were items which benefited from it but they ended up taking it out zeke's convergence already has a very low cooldown which is pretty weird because for having such a low cooldown, there's not many champions that end up having an ultimate, especially on the champions that end up buying this, that have like 45 second cooldown on on their ultimate. So pretty weird. Get to level this, get me some gold. Uh, we can look at the thing and we can spawn a dummy, right? So we end up buying uh, Zeke's Convergence. Right? It doesn't scale off of anything. So no matter how much HP you have, no matter how much AP you have, no matter how much, you know, I guess the only thing it scales off of is if you have magic penetration, right? If you have uh, sword shoes, if you have uh, abyssal mask, if you have, you know, a void staff, um, like these flat magic penetration items, if you have a teammate that ends up having them, it's going to deal a little bit more damage because while this dummy ends up having zero magic resistance, it is, you know, pretty much unfound or un it's not in the game where uh, people are going to have zero magic resistance, right? We could actually look at this. We could actually give this uh, champion or this thing. We could give this thing seven. We'll, we'll give it 70 MR. Right, and see how much damage this does right so first thing we're gonna look at is when i press r as galio will this item proc or will it proc when i land as you can see it procs when i land right which is actually pretty good they i believe they ended up fixing that right where excuse me where uh you know you get 
the, you actually get the value from this instead of wasting the the amount of time that it takes for you to get to you know where you go right because if it started when galio pressed his ultimate it would be not so good right uh i want to kind of move i want to put a, a dummy closer so that i can get the thing so now that we know that uh something that we can look at is the the radius of this right the radius of this is pretty small like this is the, the distance so you have to kind of be on top of them uh but obviously because it has the slow it's a little better because you know you're slowing them which allows you know it helps you get on top of them right and now let's just look at the damage versus the target with 70 mr obviously this is a a more tanky target we can also get a a less tanky target which will kind of signify the like a oops that doesn't matter like a, a backliner right it's because as we see in the in pro play a uh, zeke's convergence is usually bought as a first item and so 40 mr is you know relatively standard for like a level 9 a uh, level level 10 level 11 champion level 12 maybe right uh just you know uh galio at level 7 ends up having 42 but galio ends up having a little bit more magic resistance than a lot of champions in the game so you know the tanker champion 70 mr squisher champion 40 mr and let's see what ends up happening how much damage does this item end up doing right So it ends up doing eight per tick on you and seven per tick on you. And so it's uh, 32 damage per second on the squisher target and 28 damage per second on the uh, tankier target, meaning that it is 150, 160 damage on the squishy and 140 damage on the, the tankier target. So in total, 300 damage. Uh, is that worth it, right? Does this give you anything, right? It has good stats. Would 300 damage plus the slow, you got to remember the slow. Is that worth more than, right? If we're going to compare it to other items, is that worth more than lock it, which gives you the same stats, I believe, or it might give you a little bit more stats. Where is it? Yeah, they're right next to each other. So lock it gives you 100 less HP, but five more armor and five more MR. Which I think towards the later stages of the game, I think armor and MR are worth more because you get so much like base HP. Uh, and then you also get the HP from Locket, right? So does the damage from Zeke's compare to the damage that you're able to reduce not only on yourself, but on your teammates with the addition of the Locket shield, right? Because Locket already at a base at level one excuse me ends up applying a 200 shield so if you get a multi-team shield you're already applying a 1k you know uh health advantage to your team uh plus yeah because you're adding yourself as well right uh so this is kind of what you have to weigh it on and, and stuff like that right uh which in my opinion is is never worth Right, it's never worth to buy Zeke's over Locket, and then as a second item, would Zeke's end up being you know more beneficial than uh, getting more damage for your team, as in Abyssal or Frozen Heart, which you know lowers the damage of the enemy champions? Uh, is it better than Knight's Val, uh, you know, which makes one of your carry champions uh, that much stronger or that much tankier, plus allowing you to heal for 10% of their damage? Which, if a champion ends up dealing like 700 damage while you're still alive, you heal 700. Uh, but obviously, if there's like healing reduction and blah blah blah, right? Is it better than redemption? Uh, is it better than you know getting another item like Thornmare or something, or even Trailblazer, which is kind of funny. Uh, if you saw my video before, so yeah, like Zeke's right now, I think is in a pretty bad spot. People are buying it. Which is pretty funny. Because, you know, why would you ever buy Zeke's? Uh, it doesn't give you anything. If Zeke's gave you ultimate ability haste, would it be really good? Right? If you give you 30 ultimate ability haste, uh, which can be found in this item, uh, experimental hexplate, right? So we look at 
Uh, they, they give the same amount of Valine Haze, so that doesn't matter, right? If we look at the ultimate, it has 145 second cooldown, right? If we get this, that gives you ultimate ability haste. It goes down 30 seconds. That's huge, right? Especially for a lot of things, right? So I think if Zeke's gave you 30 ultimate ability haste, it actually would be a pretty good item, especially with the, the passive on Zeke's being 45 seconds, which is very low for a lot of champions, right? Galio, even if I get to level 16, uh, the ultimate length, the, the time on the ultimate is still 90 seconds, right? So I would end up having to get a good amount of ability haste in order to even reach to that point uh, of of uh, of this. Obviously, I'm not building uh, the, the, the correct items. I'll build the correct items just for you. You know, I'll get Frozen Heart. I'll get Abyssal Mask. Whatever, right? I'll get a Redemption as well. Right, and now my ultimate, if I get to level 16, is actually 65 seconds. And Galio's a champion that ends up having uh, one of the higher, like, what's it called? One of the higher cooldown ultimates in the game, right? So, obviously, this is, you know, a very hefty build, right? Uh, with, this is a four-item build, but I don't have, like, runes that are helping this out and, and yada, 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 right? But... Uh, this would end up being amazing, right? I think it would actually be a good addition to the game to end up giving this item uh, ultimate ability haste, right? You wouldn't have to change the passive, and it's pretty much just there, so it has synergy with your ultimate, things like that, right? This is obviously the portion of in which, uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm looking for changes and buffs. And so if you want to keep this item the same and make it not pretty much a bait item... You give it ultimate ability haste, and you could also do something where the passive is just strictly tied to the cooldown of your ultimate, right? Don't make, don't give it a a cooldown, because you know then it's kind of weird. Because a lot of champions, if you do end up stacking haste, uh, you will end up having a lower CD ultimate than than this. And you know, imagine you're able to have an ultimate that has maybe like 40 second cooldown. And, and you kind of want to use it. Obviously, in the game, you're not going to, you know, use your ultimate off cooldown. There's not many champions that are able to do that. Sejuani is one. But, you know, Maokai is one if you want to play super duper quick. Uh, but then it, it, it depends on, you know, your ultimate cooldown, right? So it should pretty much be the two changes if you want to keep it the same. Is whenever you cast your ultimate, you get this storm probably once. Uh, per you can make it like once per 15 seconds. You can make the cooldown 15 because maybe there's a champion which I'm not thinking of that you can pretty much continuously press the ultimate in order for it to ha for something to happen, and you can like get a bug where you can have this end up pretty much being permanent on a champion, which would be broken, right? If you just have permanent Zeke conversions on somebody like Annie or on somebody like Ivern or Yorick or something, because they're able to just multiply or they're able to just press. The, their ultimate button or their R button, uh, you know, every second, then that would not be good, right? They're dealing this damage very early uh, for the rest of the game, right? I'm pretty sure this even works on minions because it's not, okay, it's just the enemy champion, so it doesn't work on minions, so it's not, you know, super duper. It wouldn't be super duper uh, broken, but yes, yeah, so you can make it like a 15 second cooldown so it can't be abused in ways like that. Uh, and then. And then, yeah, or you can keep the, the stats the same and just revert the passive to the, the scaling one that, that was in the game a while ago. Uh, you know, the, the old one from 14.1, right, where it scales and you choose somebody who ends up having the uh, the accomplice, who ends up becoming the accomplice, and they'll deal more damage. This is obviously more pro play oriented as where if you change the item to or if you keep the item the same and give it ultimate ability haste, it's going to be a little bit better for your you know for everybody right obviously they're going to be the, the people who use it better who end up you know maxing out you know on on haste and stuff like that and, and doing some cool things right you could obviously also end up like stacking it with ultimate hunter and doing some cool things like that and then you have a whole bunch of ultimate ability haste and maybe you don't you know you don't need to go x amount of items that give you x amount of cd and stuff like that or you can end up having this be you know a 30 second cooldown right but wouldn't that be cool to like pretty much uh what's it called like surround or like do a build around one item 
or are kind of just like continuously make this item better through other means uh, and stuff like that, right? I think that would be a really cool thing to kind of make Zeke's a little bit more of a niche item, right? Uh, and make it not so much of a trap. And then it'll be just like if you're able, if you know, if you think the damage and the slow is going to be really good uh, or early game. You know, if you think the damage and slow is going to be really good because you have ultimate hunter and stuff like that. And you're a champion that's able to use your ultimate extremely, you know, often, right? Early game, let's say a 70 second cooldown on your ultimate because it has, it gives you that 30, uh, you know, ultimate ability haste. And then you end up, you know, in, you know, what's it called? You end up putting your runes for ultimate hunter, you know, you end up like giving some thing to add on to that you end up investing into you know your ultimate ability through runes through this item and stuff like that and, and then just constantly pick fights when your ultimate is available so you get some you get actual value out of this uh as where the locky has 90 second cooldown and stuff like that right so i think that would be very cool those are two ways that i believe uh you can make zeke's actually good because right now it's 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 okay but compared to items like locket uh which is probably uh, just the one that you want to compare it to because it has very similar stats same uh same like gold cost plus it has pretty much the same active or the same passive except it's you know instead of dealing more damage it's being able to take more damage uh but it's just a lot easier to use especially for higher level players and and stuff like that right and the longer you survive the more damage you put out and so yeah and you kind of want x champions to survive which is usually not your tank champions and so if you allow those champions to survive longer they're going to deal more damage than you know the zeke's would deal damage right so those are my thoughts on the item thank you for watching have a great day i hope you learned something i hope you know, you're out there doing doing good, right? Doing good for yourself, doing good for others, uh, and, and trying to make this place, uh, you know, better for everyone. So have a great day. You'll catch you on the next one. Uh, peace.